number of sessions today, so it's a good sign for the uh, awards program. Um, and so what we're going to do is basically uh, our four winners from this year uh, are here. They will come up, get their award, and then give a three-minute speech uh, about their project. So let's just uh, get going. So our first winner is uh, the Future Steward Award. Uh, this award acknowledges future stewards, especially students, but also including educators, trainers, and other curricular endeavors that take a creative approach to advancing knowledge of digital preservation issues and practices. So this year's winner is uh, Martin Gingenbach of the Gates Archive. And uh, Martin is recognized for his work documenting digital forensics tools and workflows, uh, especially his paper, The Way We Do It Here, mapping digital forensics workflows in collecting institutions, and his work cataloging the DF XML schema. So congratulations, Martin. Everybody hear me before our time begins. Um, how about now? Okay, I'll just stand like this. Um, so thank you all uh, very much. Thanks to uh, the NBSA, the Innovation Working Group, and also NDIP uh, for hosting this. Um, I'm just going to give some brief background on my paper. Um, as uh, Jefferson mentioned, the way we do it here is mapping digital physics workflows in collecting institutions. Uh, really came out of a digital forensic special topic that was taught at the School of Information and Library Science at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, uh, by Cowley and Cam Woods. And uh, it was my first exposure to digital forensics as it uh, applies to cultural heritage. And it was really exciting, uh, but I really came out of the course curious about practical implications and, and how it was being implemented currently in the field, who is actually using any of this stuff that we're learning about. Um, and so I conducted interviews with uh, curators and archivists and uh, electronic records managers who were currently implementing some form of digital forensic tools, processes, or whose workflows were influenced by research in this area. And the uh, interviews were really focused on very practical steps of what tools were people using, how are they being used, uh, what sort of challenges and opportunities could uh, use of, and continued development of these tools uh, realize. So uh, there are nine interviewees total, and some of you are in this room. And uh, so I just also want to take this opportunity to really thank you and, uh, for your generosity with your time, for uh, participating, and for continuing to answer all of my questions weeks and weeks and weeks after the interviews had been concluded. Um, that also goes to Cal Lee, who was my advisor for this project. Um, the findings were extremely wide-ranging, but two uh, major takeaways that I had were um, just these very granular, descriptive um, outlines of all of the steps that were involved in, in these workflows for um, people who were using digital forensic tools in their, in their management of digital content, and also um, visualizations of those workflows. So there's a lot of other stuff in the paper, and I would encourage you to check it out. It's on the Digital Curation Exchange. Um, you can search for it under my name there. Um, and so I just want to, in closing, say thank you again. Um, I also really want to call out my time remaining, Emily Gore, who featured Goodhue County, Minnesota, which is where I came from, and I can say, uh, with some certainty that that hot air balloon is probably the most exciting thing that ever <laughs> So, thank you very much, and uh, you can find me after if you have any questions about the work. Everyone gets a certificate handing out. Next up is the Individual Award. This is given to individuals making a significant innovative contribution to the digital preservation community. And this year's winner is Kim Schroeder of Wayne State University. Uh, Kim is recognized for her work as a mentor to future digital stewards and her role as a lecturer in digital preservation at WSU. Uh, she helped establish the first NDSA student group. Uh, and she supported student-led colloquium on digital preservation and has worked to facilitate collaboration between students and digital stewardship 
local cultural heritage organizations. So help uh, join me in welcoming Craig. notes and I was uh, just going to have this run behind which is uh, pictures of some of the things that we've done over the last year and a half as a student group. Uh, but to say I was uh, shocked about this award would be a drastic understatement. I actually thought they emailed it to the wrong person. There's a lot of Kims in the world. You know. uh, but the fact that my students took time out of their incredibly busy schedules to nominate me for this uh, is uh, very flattering and I thank you very much. And I believe Aubrey, Camille, Courtney, Kelly, Kevin, and Kristen, and Laura are to blame. So thank you. Uh, but I am very lucky to have students that have the foresight to understand that they need to develop their skills even deeper than just their classroom work. I have no shortage of volunteers for some of the innovative projects that we are offering our students. And um, I am very excited by their energy um, and this really, I really came to be at this place right now, partly by a quote by then Pre SIA President Helen Thibault saying <laughs> uh, that there's no shortage of digital curation work, there's shortage of digital curation skills. Uh, so I came to NDSA and after my first conference I said, wow, why am I the only one from my university here? Uh, so I started bringing students and offering projects that they could report on our students just reported on a DSpace Fedora project that they did, yay. Um, and, and so we're embarking on some web archiving projects coming in the winter, and we have a lot going on. And Wayne State um, is really well situated uh, in the cultural center of Detroit. So we have the Detroit Symphony Orchestra, the Detroit Institute of Arts, uh, the Historical Museum, the Modern Art Museum, all of these things at hand to offer student projects, and the Motown Museum. Uh, and so we really have an innovative, rich cultural area where we can offer things within walking distance for a lot of our students. And we also have online students that are really hankering for experience and digital preservation skills and that has worked out really well for us because digital allows them to execute some of these projects and to learn. So we're really happy about that. Um, <coughs> I would just say in closing that um, all the puzzle pieces we're all trying to put together is really enhanced by this dialogue um, and the colloquium that you mentioned, um, that Jefferson mentioned, um, helped me to meet Lance who then uh, we started the Regional Digital Preservation Practitioners Group. So it just continues. This dialogue from NDSA all the way down to grassroots is really helping all of us and it's helping the library system with some of our um, uh, projects and getting things done. This, the Fedora project they presented, we never would have, the library system would have never been able to um, present that newspaper and preserve that from a digital sense without the students' work. So uh, I will close with that and I just thank everybody very much. This year's winner is the Data Up project uh, coming out of the California Digital Library. Data Up is recognized for creating an open source tool uniquely built to assist individuals aiming to preserve research data sets uh, by guiding them through the digital stewardship workflow process from data set creation and description to the deposit of their data sets into public repositories. And accepting on behalf of Data Up is Stephen Abrams. So, congratulations, Stephen. Data curation add-in and equivalent web service for uh, Excel, which for uh, many in the research community is the database of choice. 
this work, um, the genesis of this work was our growing realization that in our data curation initiatives, we're accompanied by this uh, really significant shift in user interaction from uh, institutional to an individual basis. Rather than library units, we were dealing with individual faculty researchers who came to us with no real understanding of any of the um, conceptual or, or practical techniques of data curation. So it, it, although we undergo quite a bit of extensive um, educational outreach in this regard, we have found that it is far easier to augment systems than it is to change behaviors. So we are trying to intercept um, these researchers where and how they already are working, um, which for many, as I said, is Excel. Um, perhaps uh, more important than what Data Up does is what the researchers now no longer have to do. They don't have to understand metadata schemas or data dictionaries or XML or JSON syntax, um, how to register a DOI generate a citation. They don't need to know best practice recommendations for structuring their data. Uh, and uh, very importantly, they don't have to um, know how to actually submit the data set to a repository. All of that happens automatically and under the covers, uh, which I think is sort of a rare instance where opacity is actually, uh, rather than transparency, is a virtue. Um, so it's really quite a simple idea, but we think it's a very powerful one and one that we're trying to uh, be looking forward to exploiting uh, in, uh, in other systems and uh, scholarly workflows. Uh, and then finally, I'd just like to acknowledge our uh, project funders, the Gordon and Betty Moore Foundation and Microsoft Research, uh, as well as our project partner, which is the Data One Network. Thank you. Award. Uh, this is to acknowledge organizations taking an innovative approach to providing support and guidance to the digital preservation community. So this year's winner is Archive Team. Uh, the Archive Team is a loose, uh, self-described loose collection of rogue archivists, programmers, writers, and loudmouths dedicated to saving our digital heritage. They're recognized both for uh, its uh, aggressive vital work in preserving websites and digital content slated for deletion, and for its work advocating for the preservation of digital culture within the technology and computing sectors. Uh, accepting on the behalf of Archive Team, you may remember him from previous conference days as yesterday, uh, is Jason Scott. So congratulations to Archive Team. Uh, Alright, in all of my life, no one has ever had me have to ask, can you hear me now? Um, so, uh, I am merely the really bizarre band leader with the twirly baton in front of a parade of volunteers who have contributed untold amounts of hours for the past few years to what's called Archive Team. I was angry and I said something very, very approachable and, and glib, but it takes hundreds of people to be able to turn that into a functioning organization. So, I mean, I definitely want to say, uh, I couldn't even begin to name all of them, but they, there are people who have donated not just time, but thousands of dollars towards the, the use of uh, Amazon and other uh, computing technologies to be able to download these sites. And especially to the Internet Archive and Brewster Kale, who has signed off on our use of over 400 terabytes of their disk space in things that we've downloaded in the past few years. Um, you know, in terms of me, um, you know, my reward came a few years ago for me. If I, if I need a certificate, it's an email that I received from a young mother who had been using a web-based take a picture of things with your phone and we'll store it for you forever for, for as long as you ever could want it. We discovered that all of her baby photos were completely gone six months ago because of an email alert that never got to her. And the, uh, the, the response from her of when we were able to say, oh, here's all of them, is my reward, along with people like the World War II veteran's widow who's, uh, who had no access to his account who just watched in horror as his entire personal history was deleted as part of some sort of moving a simple number from three to two in some, some column somewhere by someone we'll never meet. Uh, she was delighted to get her stuff back. And I think at the end of the day, Archive Team is about bringing forward the idea that we have our heritage online now. And all of you know this. This is something that's built into your bones. 
but I'm so happy that somebody out there who would be more interested in a Kardashian realizes that their stories are being stored somewhere they don't know, and maybe they need to ask a few more questions. And the previously commented programmer journalist complex can't quite as easily sell us on the idea of another disk drive that may be deleted tomorrow. Thanks a lot. So, uh, huge uh, congratulations again. Maybe another, maybe another round of applause for our. Uh, So again, huge congrats, and uh, the, the also um, up here we have listed the, the folks from the Innovation Working Group who uh, participated in the, um, the Innovation Awards team, and we look forward to doing this again. This is the second year we've done this. Um, and I just have a few quick um, housekeeping announcements, and then we'll, um, we'll be at time to, for the next set of uh, uh, sessions. So, First off, the um, afternoon breakout sessions start at um, 1.45, so check your program packet for descriptions. Um, following those sessions, there will be a break with refreshments at 2.45. During that break, um, uh, you can look for Barry Howard. Um, maybe he'll stand and raise his hand. Barry Howard um, will be hosting a, um, a new member uh, meeting for NDSA uh, members, sort of an informal gathering. So if your organization is new or if you just haven't, um, maybe you're new in your organization, you want to meet and uh, talk with some other new members, see Barry. They will be in the bell room, um, which I'm sure we will we'll all find our way to uh, at that point. Um, then the, as, a, as another reminder, we'll be back here at 3.15 for the final plenary panel of the day. And then um, Bill had a quick comment there you wanted to mention. I just wanted to take a second to thank the library people who organized and put this conference on. Um, did a fabulous job. I'm sure all, you all agree. Um, Mary Eno and her crack staff um, have again got us these wonderful facilities and great food and um, great venue for us uh, to meet in. Uh, the people uh, who have uh, organized the meeting and came up with the structure uh, were Butch Lazarchak, Barry Howard, Michelle Gallinger, Gina Jones, Salim Malik, and uh, the uh, capable chairperson of that uh, committee was Aaron Engel. So thanks to all of you. Finish eating. Uh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>